The Future According To, an audio column about future developments in tech, science, society, and culture, exclusively on BMW.com. This time, The Future of Circularity, with Anna Goldhofer. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Goldhofer, and I'm a sustainability specialist for interior parts at the BMW Group. My role at BMW is the development of more sustainable interior parts. Basically, many parts and materials that you can see and feel, like the seats, the trunk, the floor cover, the headliners, and other parts. And with a handful of colleagues and also a lot of suppliers, we work on minimizing the carbon footprint of our parts and enabling a circular economy. And I'm very happy to work on those topics because climate change is very real to me. And there are many days where I'm very anxious about the future because our planet is warming up faster than at any point in recorded history. And if that heating goes unchecked, it will continue to have devastating effects on our planet. Scientific understanding of climate change has accelerated in recent decades, that's for sure. But climate action has not really kept pace. And that got me thinking. As individuals with a climate catastrophe on our minds, we do so many things on the behavior side, and that is super important. But I also feel like the narrative on that is problematic, because very often individuals are blamed for their daily life choices, and that does not really help the topic. So when we look into the numbers, what the biggest levers are, big industries and politics have the greatest influence on climate change. But who is the industry? Well, the industry consists of us. In Germany, there are 45 million working people. So basically, I believe we need to change the industry from within. We need to push for more sustainability within our direct areas of responsibility. We have power as consumers, but also power as part of the industry. I use my power to work on circular economy. I'm not sure if everyone knows what that is and why it's necessary, so I'll try to explain. The issue is that today we live in a very linear world. Take, make, dispose. We take primary materials from the earth and we make products out of them. And the main resource for plastic products, for example, are fossil fuels like gas and oil. Those are not only limited, non-renewable resources. Extracting and distilling them also generates enormous amounts of greenhouse gas emissions as well as like oil spills. In this linear world, after we take and make, we dispose. In fact, out of all of the worldwide plastic waste, only 9% is being recycled. 12% is being burnt. And the remaining 79% is still sticking around somewhere, either in landfill or in the ocean. I think that's a crazy number. And I learned all that in university, and I saw this at various travel destinations. And when I started working, I became very aware that as a developer, I'm even responsible for it. Especially when visiting suppliers, the huge amount of cutoffs and material going to waste during the production processes really shocked me. And I was shocked because most of the waste was not getting recycled. It's not getting recycled because basically it's not designed for recycling. And most parts are a mix of materials that can only be thermally recycled. Mm, that means burnt. So I became really passionate about working towards a circular economy. Because a circular economy enables us to use our planet's resources responsibly. The idea is to bring the waste we create to new usage and therefore fuel the demand for secondary materials. And this helps with shortages of our limited resources, but it also plays a key role regarding decarbonization. When trying to develop circular products or parts for cars, there are some main things to look at. The first is zero waste design. How can products and production be designed to achieve a minimum or best case, no amount of waste. The second, very important, is the choice of materials. Can I substitute primary materials by secondary materials that have already been recycled? Because that has a major influence on the carbon footprint. And also when looking at the overall construction, is that overall construction recyclable? 
And very often the answer to that is monomaterials, because a mix of materials or so using glues and other inseparable connections are problematic to recycle. And that leads me to number three, the design for disassembly. How can those different materials or also parts within a vehicle be taken apart with a minimum amount of effort and explanation? So this is what we keep in mind when developing circular car parts. When we started with this direction some years ago, we started with circular floor mats. We managed to reduce 60% of the CO2 footprint by using secondary materials, such as repurposed plastic waste and a monomaterial construction in all layers. And because of that, those floor mats are fully recyclable into new floor mats. Those parts are not only recyclable in theory, this is actually implemented for the entire production waste ever since the start of the series production last fall. And I think that's really cool. But what's even cooler is that we were able to transfer this approach to many other interior parts, such as the sky roof, the floor covering, trunk parts. We're looking at everything, basically. And this year we're tackling the seat. It is such an important but also very complex part. Many of the materials and combinations that are used, such as the foam, the leather, inherit a really high footprint and are not recyclable. So we focus on finding new materials that are modern, exciting, premium, and of high quality. So from the development side, we have many ways of making parts circular. And by doing that, we have a direct, immediate influence on all of the waste that is being produced within the production, such as cutoffs. If we make parts circular, the production waste can be directly led back into the material cycle. When I look into the near future, I'm convinced that circular economy and sustainable cars in general need a bigger 360 degree approach. To enable a true circular economy as an industry, I think we need to work really closely together with other car manufacturers in our entire supply chain. But also with recycling companies and with smart digital tools to label, trace and recycle goods and resources along our entire already existing supply chain. And adding to that, I also see that we must build up a supply chain that leads back to us after the end of life of our vehicles. Because primary materials are limited these days. And as I said in the beginning, 79% of the world's plastic waste is currently not getting recycled. It's still sticking around. And that means that there is so much untapped potential for secondary material that is currently being a harmful environmental hazard. I'm hopeful that we can tackle the climate crisis as the knowledge, engineering and action powerhouse that we are through courage and commitment at all levels and by using innovative technologies. When I envision the future, I want products to not only be less bad, but actually good for the planet. I want them to be fully CO2 neutral, maybe even positive. And in like the perfect world, maybe a car could even take CO2 in and therefore even clean the environment from it. Maybe... It could be charged by solar energy while parking. Maybe the tire abrasion could even fertilize the soil. Maybe it could be a shelter for homeless people at night. Maybe we could redefine driving pleasure by changing the narrative towards customers wanting to be the most efficient driver. Working towards carbon reduction and circular economy is what keeps me working for a big company. Because especially in big companies, also small change scales up. And what I also love about this is that it motivates so many people around me to work on similar topics. Because how we're treating the planet as private individuals, but also at work, it is being seen. We all influence and inspire our colleagues, our bosses, our parents, our kids, friends, and even our opponents. So let's keep influencing towards more sustainability and let's close this knowledge behavior gap.